Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, we're going to do more than just an individual chart option, but we're gonna be able to set global defaults for all of our charts. Let's say you have an entire site full of charts and you want them all to either look or function or feel the same, you could set global defaults so that all of your charts have the same settings without having to reset these settings on the options for each individual chart. So let's get going on that now. So we've gone over a bit about configuration already. We've set the bottom ticks to zero. We've changed some of the colors and just sort of the configuration elements in our chart already. But let's say we have another chart and we don't wanna have to have these options in every single chart. Now what's great is that chart.js allows us to have some global configuration options. And these global configuration options can change a lot of stuff. For instance, let's head to Adam here, and we can just start up here above our get element by ID. And let's go ahead and have a new declaration. We're simply just going to say chart, and that chart is the same chart as this function, right? So we don't, we don't have to have this defined anywhere because we're bringing this in with this library here. And we can say chart.defaults.global. Let's check out one particular option. We can say responsive, and we can set this as equal to false. By default, responsive is equal to true, and therefore our chart, as we know it right now, is responsive. Check it out, it's already responsive, right? Let's go ahead and actually do a command R on this and refresh, and what we have now is our chart isn't responsive. And you'll remember when we set the width and height, well, that's what it's using. So basically whatever you use here in your canvas is whatever this is going to take and your chart's not going to move from this size. Now I can't 100% recommend not having your chart be responsive. I mean, maybe you'll want to have the container changing at different sizes, but I think the option of having your chart resized to the parent container is definitely gonna come in handy more often. Now let's go ahead and come to the chart.js.org and check out what sort of global configuration options we even have. So under documentation, global chart configuration, you could see there is a ton of stuff. So for instance, responsive animation, maintain aspect ratio, events, hover on hover on click. Right now it does nothing, but let's say we wanna have something happen when we click. Default font color, default color, uh, all sorts of great stuff here. And this is all just within the global charts. Now inside of global charts, there's also global charts dot title and you can assign all sorts of things like display, whether we want the title to display or not, whether this is full width, font color, all sorts of stuff. Then we have charts dot global dot legend, which is going to be the legend itself, which we can see right now, just uses these two different items. We could change anything from the label to the font color of the label. And you can access any of these just by drilling down within this object, chart dot default dot global dot legend dot labels dot font color that's going to get you to change the font color and there's just a ton of stuff here so you can really get in here and really modify uh, so many of these defaults that you know i mean here we can change our tool tips for the entire project in case we have more than one graph on a page or even in a project and we just want to keep these defaults where they're at now again there are a ton of options here uh so i mean obviously we can't show all of these but it's going to be great for you to just head to this documentation and just see all the, the different things you can change globally. Now, for instance, right now, we have our chart animating. When we refresh, it does this little animate up. And you can see we have the default ease as ease out court. You could always change that to a different easing function if you'd like. We could have a function go on progress or on complete. So once this animation is completed animating, you could have a function in here simply by uh, grabbing this entire thing. Let's say chart.animation. Okay, all this stuff. Let's grab it. I'm gonna make this responsive again. And we're using charts.defaults.global.animation and we can grab the on complete and, and we can set this equal to a function. Now this could be equal to a function that's already defined or you could simply, I'm using an arrow function here, by the way, I'm using the ES 2015 or ES 6 syntax for all of this stuff. 
Uh, all you need to know that this is equivalent to the word function before this right here. I mean, this could very well be, um, it could very well be like this. Uh, the reason I like the arrow function is because of its, the reason I like the arrow function is because of how it preserves this. Okay, if you wanna learn more about that, check out, there's all sorts of great documentation on the ES2015 syntax. Keep in mind, this is only gonna work in newer browsers. Uh, so if you don't have a newer browser up and running or you're not using something like Babel then you're going to want to go ahead and use var instead of constant let and obviously a function instead of arrow but I want to keep this as modern as possible now inside of here we can just simply say console.log and let's say finished okay so this function is going to fire whenever the animation's complete, and we should see console.log finished when it is. Let's go ahead and open up our console so we can see that it happened. And let's come here and refresh it. And as you can see, uh, after that animation is completed, we do have finished being output to our console log. You can see it again in action, boom, just like that. Super cool. So a lot of this stuff is really useful. I mean, maybe you want this function to run and do something to your page once the chart's finished loading so that you, you just have, you have that knowledge of when it's finished loading. You can also change the duration of the animation. Let's say 1,000 milliseconds is too long. We could come in here and change this to... Let's change this to a number now. So the previous value is 1,000. And let's go ahead and have this be something like 200. This is gonna be a really super quick animation now. And we can come back and refresh. Whoop, and there we go. We got that nice quick animation. Super cool. So these are global configuration options. As you can see, there is a ton of stuff. Like you can even set the global line border color to change the default border color for your entire project if you'd like. But as you can see, it's a simply just a matter of drilling down into these objects and setting these values to what you want them to be. Super cool. So this is global chart configuration in chart.js. As you could see, there is a ton, ton, and ton of options to change here. So get into it if you want to make sure that you can keep your charts fully unified in either their appearance or just their function. You can set all your things in global variables, and that way you don't have to come in here to your individual chart and set things like the border color if every single one of your charts is going to have the same border color. Cool, so this is global chart configuration. Now in the next video, we're gonna dive into a bar chart, but this one we're gonna write from hand, and we're gonna do it a little bit differently. So I challenge you to create a bar chart and we're gonna go ahead and do so, maybe perhaps try it without even looking. See, see if you can come close to what the actual syntax is. And then after you've either failed or succeeded with your bar chart, head to the documentation and check out their examples because they're really super good. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment at this video, hit me up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tutorials. If you want extra content in this series, you can purchase this series or become a Level Up Pro at store.levelup.tutorials.com.